We started a little bit early to let everyone get on. How's everyone doing? Hi Dee. Hi Bo. <laughs> Serata's right here. Come here, Serata. Come here. I don't think you could see her, but she's here. Um, so I have a really, I got a really nice email from um, from a woman who had come to my kirtan at uh, when I was doing it at Unity Church, and I'm sure I'll be doing it again soon. Um, but she emailed me and she was um, inquisitive and both and distraught too with kind of what's been going on um, with all of the, the violence at the protests and everything and she was just commenting on how she remembers me talking about how we're not the body, how we're spirit soul. And she said how she was really confused and kind of feeling conflicted that, you know, she cared about the bodies of the people who were being affected by not only the police violence, but the violence that was going on at the protests. And she just kind of, um, she said she had lost her beads. So she asked me for some more beads because she said she really wanted to start chanting again and she knew that she felt like it had given her comfort when she was doing it. Um, so anyway, we just kind of were going back and forth in an email and um, it was really nice because she was able to um, take shelter really of what she had learned from the meditation classes about not being the body um, and about using these mantras as a way to um, create peace within, even though there's maybe turmoil on the outside, um, so or around us. So it was kind of we had a two or three different exchanges and an email, and um, it was really nice. And it brought me to um, so one of the. Because she was asking, she was just like, how, how can people, she said, I'm not, I'm not naive. She said, I know things are going on in the world, and they have been going on in the world for eons. But how, she said, how can people be so, um, you know, cruel, one, 
um, and, and, and how can they have you know the mindset that they have and so in so I was just sharing a few of um, a few things from the Bhagavad Gita that I thought might help her and I came across this um, this text that I think is helpful for everyone even um, so I'm just going to read it as people come on and then we'll chant <laughs> but um, so there's a, a text it's in the chapter 2 the Bhagavad Gita text 67 and it says as a boat on the water is swept away by a strong wind even one even one of the senses on which the mind focuses can carry a man's away can carry away a man's intelligence so all the stuff that's going on you know it's like you'd think with people's intelligence um, the kind of brutality that the police are displaying wouldn't happen you know but in that text it was talking about how just if one of our senses is pulled away um, it could lead to anger and lust for something that we feel that is going to give us happiness in, on, or around our bodies or one of our senses. And it could literally create so much anger if, that's, if it's not happening that we lose our intelligence. And I don't know about you, but I know that one of the most valuable things in um, studying the yoga science and understanding that I'm not this body is that I'm also not my mind, that I can control my mind, I can change my mind, I can reel in my mind. And um, self-introspection is a part of spiritual life. And so in sharing this text with her, um, it was valuable for me to be able to, um, to think about what's going on, to check myself, to make sure that um, that you know my understanding of not being this material body that being spirit soul that I'm actually portraying that out in the world and so um, this chanting that we're going to do in a minute because I see more people are on this chanting that we're going to do actually helps to helps us be able to control our minds and be able to use our intelligence to uh, make decisions and um, so not only is it purifying and nourishing for our hearts but it's a, on a very practical level it helps to um, give us the ability to control our senses to um, be able to use our intelligence and um, yeah so I told you guys that I was gonna share this book I have the um, 99 names of Allah. I found it. So later I was going to share that with you. Share a couple of the names. So anyway, hey you guys. I'm ready to get revitalized with some holy names. How about you? So, Sarada is already asleep. Let's see if the drum... She usually wakes up with the drum. <laughs> nice to see you guys. Haribo, Haribo, Harinamadasi, Joy T, Joy, 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 Joy. Joy is here to obtain some joy from chanting. <laughs> We're all gonna get some joy. We can use some to fill up our reserves. Namaste, Debbie. Nice to see you. Okay, you guys, I'm going to offer a prayer to my spiritual teacher, and then we're going to chant. We're going to, so the first one we're going to do is Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. I think everyone on here has already seen the mantra, so I'm not going to um, hold them up again. If someone here wants to um, put the mantras in as I chant, that's good, but I think everyone knows them. So we're going to do Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, which means I offer my respect to the Supreme Person, God. Jayatam Srimati Katyani Devi Dasi
protest that's going to happen today with one of the local pastors here in Las Vegas. Uh, a rally and a protest for peace and keep everyone hydrated. Service above self. Today, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
Hari Om. Love that one. I'm going to read this first one more time because it's so helpful. So, one of the effects of adding this chanting to your life. So these are just, these are mantras. Mantras are sacred holy names of God. And these mantras come from the yoga scriptures, but there are holy names of God that come from every scripture, from every culture of the world. Um, these are very sweet. These are the mantras that I was taught to chant close to 30 years ago. And I think they're becoming, luckily, tattooed to my heart. <laughs> they are my mantras of choice. And that's why I chant with you. Every week with using these mantras, um, very intimate, very potent, spiritually potent, spiritually purifying, extremely nourishing for the soul. So an effect of chanting these mantras is helping us to um, rein in our senses, to focus our senses while we're chanting on the sound vibration and in that way unextraneously connecting to the Supreme Soul. So it's a very, um, very powerful meditation. Um, and it's, it's wonderful because you don't have to really think about it. You just have to listen and repeat it and kind of, and I said, you know, you can get lost in the holy name. It's not really getting lost in it. If you can really focus on these mantras, you're actually awakening awakening you, the soul, in a huge way. Um, but an effect of this is to help to be able to control our minds. And, you know, in spiritual life, it's really important to be able to um, remember that sound vibration is so powerful. So if we're able to control our minds and watch the things that sometimes enter our minds, Sometimes I think about things and I go, what the heck? <laughs> and it just happens. You know, things come in our minds. We're inundated with um, stuff every day, right? Um, we, don't have to be a, we don't have to be attached to the stuff that enters our minds. Thank goodness, right? <laughs> we can watch stuff go by just like a river. But from what enters our minds, we can use our intelligence to contemplate it or to let it go, act on it, not act on it. And when you purify your senses and purify your consciousness, um, the ability to rein in your senses and your mind is becomes an art. And it's very useful in spiritual life because sound vibration is very potent. And so if we're able to uh, use our mind to contemplate on spiritual things and focus our senses on spiritual things, then living in this world but not being of it becomes a lot easier and it becomes sublime. So this is a, this is a text from the Bhagavad Gita. I read it while everyone was coming on. I thought I would read it again. It's Bhagavad Gita chapter 2, text 67. It says, as a boat on the water is swept away by a strong wind, even one of the senses on which the mind focuses can carry away a man's intelligence. So the intelligence that we've been given, being um, a soul in these human bodies, is highly coveted. It's, it's a, something that we shouldn't take very lightly. And so when we use our intelligence to um, especially set aside a time every day to focus on spiritual matters, then we're able to um, remember that we're spirit soul, remember that we're not these material bodies, and be able to relate to everyone else in this world as spirit soul as well. And with really living namaste, which means I offer you the spirit soul respect in God's name. So it's not a light thing to engage in spiritual activities every day in order to be able to, um, you know, we all want to be the best that we can be, right? 
we all want to live, we all want to use this life that we have, um, the intelligence that we've been given, in order to benefit our brothers and sisters. Um, so the love that we can cultivate, the love that we can awaken within ourselves, the love for God that we can awaken within ourselves, um, eventually emanates and is portrayed in the actions that we take in our everyday lives. So this mantra meditation is a wonderful tool to be able to um, stay focused on what is most important. Um, remembering that we're spirit soul and that we are eternal servants of the supreme soul. And that service of us above self attitude that we can take out in the world is nurtured and grown by introducing and adding this chanting to our lives. Uh, so easy too. So we're going to um, do Japa meditation and then I'm going to read a little bit not read a little bit, I'm just gonna show you some um, names from that book. But first we're gonna do Japa meditation. So everyone get out your beads. Does everyone have them? I don't know who actually did the one round of mantra meditation with Japa meditation beads, uh, one round a day for 30 days. I don't know who, who um, fulfilled that. So, if, but if you did, Please message me. I, I said this last week because it was over last week. If you did, I have something very special for you that I want to mail to you. I want to send you, or if you're local, I'll bring it to you, um, a gift for doing 30 days of Japa meditation. Um, and I'm just going to do it every month. So, And it's an honor system. So if you could do at least one a day, Japa meditation and one a day, um, I have a special gift for you at the end of the month. So we're gonna do it every month. So um, it's been about a week. So we could still, you could still get in on it. So Japa meditation is this kirtan, but done in a more personal way. So we just did it as a virtual group. <laughs> um, when this quarantine is over and it's gonna be over eventually, um, all you in California and here in Nevada um, will be able to get together and do kirtan together again as a group. But now we're doing it virtually. But Japa meditation is doing it on Japa beads. And it's still using God's names as a tool, using the mantra as a tool, but it's saying it uh, quieter. So you just say the mantra loud enough on each bead as you touch each bead, just loud enough for you to hear. Um, so still focusing your mind on the sound and we're going to do uh, today we're going to do the mantra Goranga uh, Goranga means golden lord of love it's the name of God beautiful and we're going to start with any bead on either side of the head bead you're going to touch it and then we're going to say the mantra if you don't have beads get in touch with Petita Pavana on Spirit, Soul, and Friends, or myself, you can message me and we'll send you some beads and a mantra sheet with all the mantras on it and the names of uh, the description, uh, the definition of the mantra. Okay, so we'll start with um, a deep breath and then on the exhale, we'll start saying Goranga. Ready? Take a deep breath. Fill your belly with air. Exhale. Goranga, Goranga. Next speed, Goranga, Goranga. Good, Goranga, Goranga. Focus on the sound, Goranga, 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 Goranga. If you don't have beats, just say the the mantra, Goranga, Goranga. Goranga, 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 
Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga, Goranga. That's Java meditation. Are amazing. So, if we can add um, the kirtan, and what's nice now is that you can go on Spirit, Soul, and Friends website. You can go on High Desert Yoga and Kirtan Facebook page. You can go on my Facebook page. Las Vegas Kirtan and Mantra Meditation. You can go on SoundCloud at Las Vegas Kirtan Mantra Meditation in order to hear Kirtan when we're not doing it live like this. So there's so many options to hear this Kirtan. Um, you can hear a replay of all the Kirtans that we do. And if you listen a little bit every day, um, it's like tending to a spiritual garden. So you know how you have to water a garden in order for the plants to grow? So the seed of love for God is watered within the heart of the soul. And when you water it every day with these holy mantras, the seed sprouts and grows and grows unlimitedly. Um, so I wanted to share with you, this is a book by a gentleman named Shems Friedl Friedlander. And it's called The 99 Names of Allah. And I've been telling people about it. I learned about it about 25 years ago. Um, and it's so nice because it shows how names of God from every culture are so beautiful. So I will probably not pronounce the Arabic 100%, but I'm gonna try my best. So what's really neat about this is that it gives the Arabic and then the English translation and then, or, yeah, and then the English translation there. So it's really pretty. Arabic is so pretty. So this one is, um, so R Rahman means the beneficent, beneficent, beneficent. So the person who, so it's in a name of God that means uh, he who gives blessings and prosperity to all beings without showing disparity. How beautiful is that? Then R Rahim, R Rahim means the merciful. And al Qudus means the holy. As-Salam, you hear that quite a bit in the Muslim faith, as-Salam, that means the source of peace. 
that God is the source of peace. And I always get emotional. I don't know about you, but that really um, proves to me, you know, one God, many names. It doesn't matter what culture you come from. It doesn't matter where you were born. It doesn't matter what color skin you have. It doesn't matter what your upbringing. There's one God, many names, unlimited names, and they're, they're all names of God that explain God's mercy, God's love, the love that we can have for God. Um, it's just very unifying. And it, and it seems like it doesn't matter what, you know, what week it is, <laughs> you know, there's always a time when, especially now in this day and age, Kali Yuga, the age of coral and confusion, that we can use things to find unification. We're all spirit soul. We're all spirit soul children of God. So I'm going to chant a little bit. Um, I'm going to do Gopala Govinda Rama. I'm a crybaby. I cry at everything. People tease me. I can't help it. I cry all the time. But it's good. They're, they're tears of um, hope. Tears of hope, tears of uh, joy, tears of um, happiness. So this is Gopala Govinda Rama, Madonna Mohana, and then I'm going to chant other mantras to this tune. Same, same. Call and response. I'll chant and then you chant. I'll chant with you. Dana Mohan 
energy of the Lord, kindly engage me in your loving devotional service. That's what. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That's what that means. <laughs> Pretty cool. Love it. Thank you for everyone for helping with all of the um, the mantras. I haven't been able to scroll. Oh, you guys are awesome. I wanted to give a shout out, especially everyone from the High Desert Yoga Kirtan page. Hello, Hari Bol. Thanks for tuning in. So cool. Everyone from um, the Bullhead City Group. So I'm going to be posting this uh, in lieu of the 5 o'clock going live. So I just want to give a shout out to everyone. I think I see Susan on here. I'm not sure who else from Bullhead City. Hi, Bo Talia. We got Talia from California, Annette from California. Oh, Ma. Hey, Ma. She's from Bullhead City. So all my Bullhead City, dearly beloveds, I love you. I don't know how to do that. Oh, I guess I got it. Woohoo! Love you guys. So I'm going to be playing this uh, on the Facebook group page in lieu of going live on 5 o'clock at 5 o'clock because, like I was explaining before, I'm going to be going and helping at a uh, local pastor is having a uh, very peaceful protest at one of the local parks. And... Um, I volunteered to bring water and snacks and to kind of be on a lookout for people who may be um, overheated. So I have a little bit of a, a medical background, so I'm going to be um, keeping an eye out for that and making sure everyone's hydrated, um, just being a ancillary support for and giving voice to the voiceless. And so... Thank you so much, you guys. So we're going to end today with um, a little bit of ohm breathing. We're going to ohm out. So just to leave you with a little bit of food for thought. Again, this, this mantra meditation is like a pebble in a lake. So the spiritual benefit from it is unlimited, but the... Um, the, what's the word, uh, what's the word when it, the exponential, that's the word I'm looking for, the exponential social benefit. So chanting is actually, my spiritual teacher's spiritual teacher said that chanting is the highest social work that you can do because it's so potent for each, every individual soul. So, I encourage everyone to chant every day. Um, Japa meditation, kirtan. So we're gonna do some om breathing. And if you have some anxiety today, a way to turn off anxiety is to deep breathe, a, a diaphragmatic breath. So we'll practice this om breathing with some deep breaths in our diaphragms. So no chest breathing allowed. So bring your breathing down from your chest to your belly. And you can even put your, your hands on your belly so that when you breathe, you can actually feel whether your, your hands are expanding. It's a good way to do it. And if you can't find your breath in your belly, when we get off of here, if you lay down on the floor or in your bed or whatever, and you do it laying down, you're able to kind of breathe more easily in your belly. And then practice that during the day. Be conscious of where your breath is during the day. Bring it down. And if you're having an anxiety attack or if you're stressed out, do some Karanka breaths. Bring your breathing down to your belly. Concentrate your mind on Karanka. Inhale, exhale, do it 10 times. This is good for a panic attack. So if you're having a panic attack, Inhale into your belly. Exhale, Goranga. Goranga. Do that 10 times. It's the best medicine for an anxiety attack. Okay. 
Guarantee it works. I've used it myself. <laughs> so we'll do OM though. Right now we'll do OM. So we'll inhale, we'll expand our bellies. Make sure you've got space between your ear and your shoulders. Bring your shoulders down. Bring air into your belly. Exhale, pull your belly button in. Again, take another breath. Bring, your, bring the air into your rib cage. Exhale, bring your belly button in. This next time we're gonna, on the end, exhale, add the mantra OM, and we'll keep breathing and OMing. Inhale. Exhale. Om. Focus your mind on the sound. Keep breathing and oming. Last time, focus on the sound from your heart, everyone. Oh. Namaste. I offer you the spirit, soul, respect in God's name. Namaste. Let's bring that namaste out into our communities, everyone. Chant for peace. Chant for love. Grow your love. Take time every day to chant. Grow your love exponentially, because when you do that, it spills over. It does. You guys are amazing. Keep a lookout for this um, in the group. If you're in the group and going to watch it at 5, I'm going to post this there. Tomorrow, 1 o'clock, High Desert Yoga. It's going to be more Kirtan. More Freddy the Unicorn's going to chant with everyone. <laughs> and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're going to have to tune in tomorrow to check it out. So great. It's awesome. We'll see Bhakti and, and Ivy and Joey T chanting. And then Sunday at 3 o'clock, Petita Pavana and Spirit Soul and Friends is going to chant. You can't miss that either. So we've got a, a whole weekend ahead of us of, of chanting. Um, choose love, choose peace. Put your arms in the air and say, Haribo! Again, one more time. Haribo! I lied. One more time. Haribo! Chant the names of God. I love you guys. You're amazing. How do you